Hi, I'm Megan McKenzie. And I'm James Rowland. Welcome to this edition of Teens in Action. In this show, we focus on cigarettes. We'll explain why smoking can turn into an addiction, how tobacco companies use advertising and movies to target teens, and what the many chemicals in cigarettes do to your body. Each day in the United States, nearly 4,000 kids try their first cigarette. What makes them want to try? And how long will it take before they start craving cigarettes? We sent our Teens in Action reporters out on the street to ask you what you think about teen smoking and addiction. It's widely known that smoking cigarettes is bad for you, yet more and more teens start every day. So Teens in Action went on the streets to ask you, why do teens smoke? It's to relieve stress, or they think it's cool. They get into peer pressure with all their friends. Because they want to look cool. Most just want to be cool because other kids do it. I think teens smoke because they're under stress. I guess it's obviously peer pressure and because they want to experience, most likely. Because they want to be cool. Because they're pressured to. Maybe they get pressured into it by other people, like peer pressure. I think teens smoke because they're under stress or they try to solve their problem. Peer pressure, I guess, because you smoke, then you're cool. Because they want to be cool. I don't think it's really peer pressure. I think they're just curious. Boredom and peer pressure. Over the past decade, there has been virtually no decline in smoking rates among teens. Do you know how many of your fellow teens smoke in the United States? Is it A, 23% of high school and 10% of middle school students, or B, one-fourth of all teens? Is it C, 4.5 million teens, or maybe it's all of the above? Let's say a D, all of the above. First one, 33%. I say D, all of the above. I think it'd be um, one-fourth of teens. All of the above. Wait, all of the above. I say D, all of the above. <laughs> 4.5 million teens? D, all of the above. Well, all of them are right. What is addiction? It's defined as both a physical and psychological craving for something. Let's hear some of the answers we got on the street. Addiction is when you can't stop. You always want more and more. You can't have enough. Starting something and not being able to let it go. You know, when you're hooked on something, you can't get off of it. When you can't help but do it over and over again. You need to have a substance so badly that you'll do anything to have it. You start something, you can't stop. When you can't control your craving for something? Heroin. Crack, that's addiction. When you start something and you can't live without it and it just becomes part of your routine. When somebody's addicted to something, they really want it every day and if they don't have it, they'll do anything to have it. <laughs> when you have something and you can't stop taking it. When, you're, when, you, when you can't stop smoking or doing what you're doing. Addiction is when you can't stop. Addicted to like some type of drug and you love the feeling and you just can't get enough of it. On average, how long does it take to get addicted to smoking? A, one cigarette, B, one pack of cigarettes. C, don't worry, it takes a long time. D, a few weeks. Or E, two months. Well, it really depends when I say one cigarette. It takes one cigarette. I hear a lot, once you first cigarette, you can just like get hooked on it. One cigarette. One cigarette. One cigarette. Probably take one cigarette to get addicted to it. I think it's one pack. Once you try it, you're probably already addicted to it. Pack few weeks because once you just you start doing it for a couple of weeks you're just like hey I'll try it again and then it keeps going and going over and over again. A few weeks I think. Probably a uh, pack. Actually on average it takes a few weeks of even casual smoking to get addicted. We went out and asked 150 teens these questions. Who do you think smokes more? Teenage boys or teenage girls? The teens we surveyed said boys smoked more. However, Statistics show that girls smoke more. Boys are more public about smoking, and girls tend to hide it more. Next up, we'll take a look inside the brain to show how nicotine takes control. But first, we have a question for you. Did you know more people die from tobacco-related illness than from AIDS, car accidents, illegal drugs, murders, and suicides combined? 
Cigarettes contain over 4,000 chemicals. Can you name six? Hang tight and see if you have the answer. Passing gas around infants can be deadly. Passing gas releases a toxic fog of ammonia and hydrogen cyanide, which can be especially harmful on an infant's developing lungs. Passing gas can even contribute to sudden infant death syndrome. Kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Don't pass gas, take it outside. Anyone else? My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, David. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking Who's next? before they start drinking. So, were you able to come up with any of the six chemicals out of the 4,000 that are in cigarettes? Nicotine, ammonia, arsenic, methane, butane, and carbon monoxide. Most of these chemicals are added to cigarettes to keep you addicted. When you smoke a cigarette, nicotine reaches the brain 10 seconds after the smoke is inhaled. Your brain quickly gets the message that it wants more of the chemicals you're feeding it. We wanted to get a better understanding of how smoking harms your body. So we went to Providence St. Joe's Hospital to talk with a professional about this issue. Hi, I'm Shadi from Hi, the Shadi. Teens in Action. I'm Dr. DeMonte. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Why don't we go over this way and take a tour of the hospital? All right, sounds good. So what are some common myths with smoking? Well, that if you smoke less cigarettes, it's safer. That if you don't inhale, it's safer. Or that if you use a lower nicotine or lower tar um, cigarette, that it's safer. Mm -hmm. But it isn't. It's still smoking. It's been known that nicotine is just as addictive as cocaine and heroin. How does that work? Well. Addiction, there's two components. One is that it gives you a feeling that you desire, okay, which is, and smoking will give you um, a pleasant feeling initially. The second aspect of addiction is that it, um, if you don't have it, you will have withdrawal effects also, which you will experience with smoking. What are the physical effects of nicotine on the brain? Well, nicotine, what it does is it releases a chemical which then affects the CNS, or the central nervous system, the brain, mm -hmm. um, and that gives us the pleasant feeling. When that wears off, you get tired, you get depressed, and then the brain is actually actively seeking out the nicotine again, and that is the addiction. In a previous segment, um, we've talked about how the eight ounces of tar collects in your lungs over mm -hmm. a year when you smoke just one pack a day. So can you explain how the lungs do that and how does it function that way to absorb that much tar? Well, what happens is tar is one of the things in smoke. When you smoke, it comes down into your lungs, into your bronchi. In the bronchi, there is something called cilia, which are these tiny microscopic hairs that beat upward to try to get whatever gets down into the lungs up and out. This tar, the smoke, all of the carcinogens in the smoke tend to slow down the beating of the cilia, meaning it doesn't allow the cilia to move properly, function properly, and what will happen is that it ends up getting stuck in there. 
Okay, so as a result of the tarp being in there, you have more increased mucus production that isn't being expelled by your body. And so it makes you more susceptible to things like bacterial or viral infections. More smokers get heart disease and lung cancer. Mm -hmm. So why is this fact not emphasized as much? Well, the thing with heart disease is that there are a lot of causes for heart disease. Aneurysms, where you get bulging out of some of the major um, blood vessels. Um, other things like emphysema, asthma, chronic bronchitis, high blood pressure, you know, and possibly high cholesterol, possibly diabetes. It all leads up to this heart disease. Uh, that's why it's important to know that smoking definitely is a big risk factor for developing heart disease. So in a sense you're saying it's kind of like a domino effect leading to oh, heart yes, disease. Oh yes, definitely. That's a good way to, to put it together. Mm -hmm. So Dr. DeMonte, if you can explain to me how does carbon monoxide affect the lungs and the body? In essence, what, the, what happens is that the carbon monoxide sticks to the red blood cell. Mm -hmm. Even if there is carbon dioxide there, or oxygen there, it tends to be uh, have more affinity for the red blood cell, mm -hmm. and the red blood cell then can't do its job and um, deliver oxygen to you know tissue in the body. In the cigarettes, there are you know low amounts of um, carbon monoxide, and that can result in tiredness. That can result in chest pain. Mm -hmm. um, we're all accustomed to the situation with you know high levels of carbon monoxide where you sort of just lose consciousness. Okay. You mentioned that not enough oxygen is delivered to the tissues. So what would happen to that living tissue? Well, we are aerobic beings so, and all our tissue needs oxygen. So if it's carbon monoxide instead of oxygen on that mm -hmm. red blood cell, it's going to die. Is the damage to your organs irreversible? With smoking, yes, it can be. There's mm -hmm. something called emphysema or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Lungs um, are made up of alveoli, all these little grape-like structures inside. And if we were to spread out all the alveoli onto you know, a, a flat surface, it would be bigger than a tennis court. With emphysema, you have less surface area. So that tennis court size lung, you know, pocket of space, um, is diminished drastically and what happens basically is you have less lung um, capacity to be able to exchange oxygen and you find that the person who has emphysema is almost gasping for breath. It's not fun to see. <coughs> Today, we are all concerned with our physical appearance. Can you just briefly explain to me how smoking affects it? Well, primarily, I think one will notice that it ages a person by a lot in a very little amount of time. It gives you wrinkles, it yellows your teeth, it, can, it makes your, you know, your hair and your clothes smell. And if you're active, it sort of decreases your athletic performance. Um, and also makes you more risk for developing injuries and also healing less. When you tell patients they have a serious disease related to smoking, what's their reaction usually like? It varies. I mean, people who have had, had experiences with loved ones who have smoked may want to quit right away because they see the effects. But we, all, we both know that smoking is very addictive. So others may have a difficult time even knowing that they have a disease to quit smoking without the help of, you know, some um, medication or therapy. They will have loss of wages, they won't be able to work because they either have to go to their treatments or physically they're not feeling well enough to go to work. Um, their, their families will suffer and unfortunately it will lead to an earlier death. Stay tuned and find out what substance in cigarettes makes your lungs black and sticky. But first, check out this fact. Did you know in the United States, 45 people die from smoking every hour? How many minutes of your life do you lose every cigarette you smoke? Stick around for the answer. Passing gas in the presence of others is not only inappropriate. That is so foul. It can be deadly. 
Passing gas releases a fog of carbon monoxide. Grandpa! And other poisonous fumes that can contribute to asthma and pneumonia. You're killing us over here. Kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Don't pass gas. Take it outside. When I do it, I feel the blood rushing through me. And I keep going back for more. Carmen Castillo is under the influence of Dana, her volunteer trainer. Come on. Let me see you show the shit. By spending just one day a week with kids like Carmen, Dana helps them develop interests that keep them away from drugs. Be a coach, a mentor, a volunteer, because you have something to offer. So how many minutes of your life do you lose when you smoke a cigarette? On average, each cigarette shortens your life anywhere from 7 to 11 minutes. In other words, the time it takes you to smoke a cigarette equals the time the cigarette takes off your life. A cigarette burns super hot at its core. This heat breaks down the tobacco and produces poisons. One of these cancer-causing poisons is tar, a sticky brown substance that damages your lungs, stains your teeth, makes your fingernails yellow, and gives you bad breath. So we went to the mall to get some hands-on reaction on how tar collects in your lungs and makes it harder for you to breathe. Smoking harms nearly every organ in your body. More than 4,000 individual compounds have been identified in tobacco and tobacco smoke. One of the most damaging compounds in tobacco is tar. We headed to the mall to ask you how many years it takes for your lungs to collect this much tar from smoking. Smoking is pretty serious, so I'd say just one year. I have no clue. Three years, maybe? Um, ten years. Five. Um, three. Six. A year. Two years. One. <laughs> Five years. A couple years. Five years. Say two years. No, one, two. Five years. Five. One. Two. A week. Probably like two years. Yeah, yeah, about a year. A year? A year? Three? Actually, it only takes one year smoking a pack a day, and this much tar sticks to your lungs. There are other immediate effects that smoking has on your body, like bad breath, yellow teeth, you and your clothes smell like smoke, and it begins to limit your active life. So we asked teens to breathe through the shortness of breath cigarette and tell us how they felt. I don't know, I really don't see the point of smoking. Anything that makes you want to cough or throw up the first time you try it. I would never do that again. <laughs> harder to breathe with it. I'm lightheaded a little. I couldn't breathe through it. I've never been into smoking ever, so I don't, I don't like breathing in anything that's uncommon. I felt kind of lightheaded. It's yeah. not a good feeling. I'm short of breath. It hurt. It, it feels bad. It feels kind of hard to breathe in and like, wish I could breathe harder. Shortage of air, like I couldn't breathe that good. And how breathing like this all the time would affect their lives. Wouldn't be able to do anything. I wouldn't be able to move, I'd be lethargic all the time. I think I would probably get cancer and then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that would just suck. I, I wouldn't have enough oxygen to like survive. I wouldn't be able to do anything. Like I would just be sitting down on the couch like, yeah. Wouldn't it be fun? Cough a lot. Wouldn't be able to do sports. That's just unhealthy. You can't, you can't be very active while you're doing that. It's not, it's not a fun thing. Uh, I don't know, it'd probably be hard to do like uh, sports or any other exercises. It would damage my lungs. Next on our survey, we asked, have you smoked a puff or two from a cigarette? Smoked a whole cigarette? recently smoked in the past 30 days, or never smoked. Fortunately, the majority of teens we surveyed have never smoked. But those who did smoke, the majority only smoked when they were with their friends. Every year, millions of people try to break the nicotine habit. Stay tuned for some tips on how you or someone you know can quit smoking. Did you know, the younger a person is when they begin to smoke, the more likely they will develop an addiction to nicotine. What percentage of adult smokers started at an early age? Stay tuned and find out. Passing gas can be deadly. 
Whoa. Oh, something's funky. Passing gas releases a plume of toxic vapors. Oh, oh, honey, not in the car. Like ammonia and hydrogen cyanide. Oh. And lethal poisons that can linger even when windows are open. Kids shouldn't be exposed to secondhand smoke. Don't pass gas, take it outside. My name's Lisa, and in nine years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Lisa. I'll start drinking in eighth grade, and I'll do some things I don't really want to do. So by the time my parents talk to me about it, alcohol won't be my only problem. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. My parents won't believe it could happen to me. So what percentage of adult smokers started smoking at an early age? Almost 90% of adult smokers started before they were 18 years old. If you don't start as a teen, chances are you'll never smoke. Being addicted to cigarettes means that you are mentally, physically, and socially dependent on them. Many people put off quitting, saying that they'll do it when the time is right. It may never feel like the right time, and quitting isn't easy. We wanted to get a better understanding of how to quit. So we found someone who knows what to do to help you take that first step. Well, thanks for coming and answering some questions for us today. Studies have shown that there are five steps for quitting smoking and quitting for good. Can you name those five steps for us? Yes, the first step would be getting ready, uh, preparing. The second would be getting support. Uh, the third, we talk about learning new skills, uh, learning new behaviors to replace uh, the smoking in your life. Uh, the fourth would be getting medication, the proper medications. And then the fifth step we talk about is uh, being prepared for relapse difficulties. How do you develop the confidence to quit? Confidence is kind of a hard way to describe mm -hmm. um, being ready to quit. We've, we kind of like to talk about it as more as ready to take the step and then you have resources to fall back upon to help you when your confidence feels low. Why is it important to make a plan before you quit? The plan is what you will fall back on if you slip, if you have a cigarette or if you go back to smoking. The plan as a structured thing um, gives you a way to think about the process of quitting smoking. What kind of support do you need from your family and friends in order to help you quit smoking? That's a good one. Uh, not only do they need to, to be committed to your health and your well-being as a person, but often smokers have uh, family and friends that are also smokers. Mm -hmm. We think it's really important to formally ask your family and your friends to support you and not to tempt you while you're trying to quit smoking. How could someone who is trying to quit smoking mess up their own progress? By not having a plan, by not being prepared. Something to fall back on. How do you deal with people who are trying to put pressure on you to smoke when you're trying to quit? This is part of preparation and planning ahead. It's a good idea to role play in your own mind if you're able what you would say, what you're most comfortable with saying in response to someone, say, asking you to go smoke with them. Once you've mentally prepared yourself to quit, what's the next step? The next step is to remove everything from your life that has to do with smoking. Ashtrays, cigarette lighters, matches, cigarettes. Get rid of everything. Uh, you can make it a little ceremony, put everything in a bag, dump it in the garbage. So that's what we remove everything that has to do with smoking. How do you distract yourself from the urges to smoke? That's a good question. Uh, exercise, eating. I mean, most people don't want to do that, but you, you can replace smoking with eating, snacking on things, healthy snacks. Mm -hmm. um, exercise, hobbies, talking to friends, talking to family, 
Why does your body go through withdrawal from nicotine? Well, as simply as I can, there is a chemical reaction in your brain when nicotine is introduced that mimics um, what your brain does when you feel good. So if you take that away after you've used it for a while to feel good, your brain says, I want, I want more. I want to continue to feel good. What are the different stages of withdrawal? You can expect uh, cravings. You can expect experiencing stress a little more intensely uh, and emotions a little more intensely. You can experience uh, hunger, uh, wanting to eat more, irritability. Sometimes people feel nauseous uh, and get headaches from the physical withdrawal. Mm. What is the easiest way to stop smoking? Is there any kind of pill that anyone can take to help them quit? Wouldn't that be great? No, there's no easy way to quit smoking. Um, we recommend a combination. Uh, in our program, we use the nicotine replacements, the medications. Uh, we use preparation, which I've mentioned, and we use support. And support is a key also. You have a place to talk about what you're going through. You have people you can call who are going through the same things. How do rewards help people stay on track who are trying to quit smoking? We like to break it down into little steps by uh, asking you to make a contract with yourself. On this day, I will promise myself that I will not smoke for five days. At the end of five days, I will reward myself with a new pair of shoes or uh, you know, a trip to the movies. Once that five day period is over, then you renew this, this contract, this reward system. So by the time X amount of rewards have passed by, you, you could feasibly have not been smoking for months. In your experience, why do certain people fail when trying to quit smoking and why do others succeed? Because they're not prepared. Understanding why you began to smoke, what to expect, um, having a plan to deal with any of those things that we've already talked about is the most important before you even put your cigarettes away, before you even stop. So what advice would you give to teens who want to quit smoking? I would say first, uh, get prepared. Second, make a plan. Write that plan down and stick to it. Um, third, utilize your support system. And then finally, if you slip, forgive yourself. Well, thank you very much for answering the questions for us today. You're welcome. For those surveyed who chose not to smoke, we asked why. Family influence, their friends don't smoke, they know it's unhealthy, it tastes and smells gross, and there's a possibility of addiction. The majority of teens we surveyed chose not to smoke because they know smoking is unhealthy. Smoking in movies is one of the most powerful pro-tobacco influence on teens in the world today. What teens don't see in the movies is the dangerous and disgusting side of smoking. It's not just the movies that promote smoking to teens. Cigarette ads show teens a view of smoking that's misleading. Let's check out what teens had to say about how tobacco companies are targeting them. Year after year, cigarette ads continue to promote smoking as part of a healthy lifestyle. Do teens recognize how they are being deceived by the tobacco companies? What are they selling in this ad? A guitar. I show how good a guitar is for somebody to buy it. Are you pursuing your dreams? A guitar. I would say be passionate about what you're doing in your life. A singer. A guitar, probably. Be passionate about what you're doing with the guitar. They're, they're selling guitars. Big guitars. A cologne or a guitar or something? Guitars. You can add maybe for music or you know, some sort of entertainment. Now, what do you think they're selling? Cigarettes. Uh, cigarettes. Cigarettes? Cigarettes. Uh, cigarettes? Cigarettes. Cigar? Uh, cigarettes. It's like cigarettes. Cigarettes. <laughs> Tobacco companies need to replace the 1,200 people who die from smoking-related illnesses in the United States every day. 1,200 every day. To keep the tobacco business going, ads are focused on young teens. It's shocking to know that tobacco companies spend $16 million on advertising. A, every year. B, every week. C, 
every day, or D, every month? Every week. Every day. Every day. Every, every day? Yeah. Every month? Year or month. Every year. Every week. Yeah, every day or every week, something like that. Every day. Every month? Every day. Every year. Every year? Every week. Every month. So, how many times do cigarette ads mention how hard it is to quit? Not very often. Probably not at all. None. Not that much. Not that much. Never. None. A lot. Yeah, none. They never do. They don't. A lot. Uh, never. Smoking in movies is the most powerful pro-tobacco influence on youth today. Believe it or not, over half of teens started smoking because they saw it in the movies. 90% of R-rated movies promote smoking to adults. 50% of movies rated G and PG promote smoking to kids. What percentage of PG-13 movies promote smoking to teens? 75? 50? 95%. None percent? Like 80%. 90? 100%? 50 maybe? 80, 90? Somewhere around 70%. Here's our final survey question. Teens were asked, who has made the most influence on their decision about the use of tobacco? Friends? Parents? Siblings? Celebrities? Or teachers in health classes? We're pleased to report most teens are influenced by their family and friends to not start smoking. There are a lot of places where you can get more information about our topic. So grab a pen and paper and get ready to write down a few sites you might want to visit. But first, we have something for you to think about. Did you know smoking can be an expensive habit? How much money does a pack a day smoker spend per year? Hang tight and see if you have the answer. them develop interests that keep them away from drugs. Nice. Looks great. Be a coach, a mentor, a volunteer, because you have something to offer. So how much does a pack-a-day smoker spend on cigarettes per year? $1,000. Just think about what you can buy with that. We've covered a lot of information about smoking in this show. Here's a recap of what you should remember and some interesting websites for you to check out. Smoking doesn't really help people lose weight. If that were true, every smoker would be thin. Smoking cigarettes with lower tar and nicotine provides no clear health benefit. Nearly 40% of U.S. teens tried cigarettes because they saw it in the movies. Once hooked, the average smoker is unable to stop for 17 years. By that time, they have spent at least $20,000 to maintain their addiction. Here's a website that supports a tobacco-free world and challenges us to question an industry that puts profits above human life. To see what they have to say, go to tobaccofreecalifornia.com. Seen Smoking is a website that's committed to helping teens understand the impact of smoking and tobacco references in entertainment. Check out their interactive website at scenesmoking.org. Quitting is hard work. Take the first step by visiting a website that will help coach you through the craving. Find help at gotaquit.com. The California Smokers Helpline is a telephone program that can help you quit smoking. For more information, visit their website at CaliforniaSmokersHelpline.org. The decision to start or continue smoking is up to you. 
Just think about this. When you decide to smoke, you're doing exactly what the tobacco companies want you to do. They control you. Do you really want a big corporation controlling your life and telling you how to spend your money? Thanks for joining us. We hope this show gave you something to think about. Please note there's always someone that you can talk to. See you next time on another exciting episode of Teens in Action. Bye. Stay classy, Burbank. film and television is directed towards young people and I think that's when people start smoking obviously when they're young and I think it looks like it's cool on television and in the movies it looks like it's satisfying and it looks like it just tastes good and it's very I mean that's the whole reason I think I started smoking a lot of times in the movies they're smoking under stress or things like that so then kids say well if I'm stressed or if I'm under pressure maybe I shouldn't maybe I should start smoking because that'll help me calm down I, mean, I can remember when I was a kid watching Rocky. After every movie, what did I do? I'd set up my room like his, like his gym. When I was in third grade, I wanted to be Rocky. I mean, if he was smoking a cigarette, I'd be smoking cigarettes. Your courses are set at a dream boat you've met. Have a real cigarette. Yeah, hey, the camel. I've got my courses. I've got my camel cigarette. Where the hell is my dream boat? What's going on here? Nothing. Just chilling. Freddie Jones, you get out of that van this instant. See you guys. Hey, man. You think you're pretty funny partying with an innocent little kid? Dude, we're, we're just chilling. That kid's 10 years old, man. He looks up to you, and you are setting an example for him, so quit messing around and start acting like a responsible adult! That goes for all of you guys. Don't make me come back here. visual look of Cruella de Vil in the animated film, she has big cheekbones and she actually looks like a skull. We brought over the long cigarette holder because all Disney villains who smoke are completely evil. Logan, my tolerance for your smoking in the mansion notwithstanding, continue smoking that in here, and you'll spend the rest of your days under the belief that you're a six-year-old girl. Just about everybody who works in a post office is an alien. Los smoking.